However, TSMC saw it as vital and asked how to use their expertise for 3 nanometers. For Samsung, it might be too early for gate all around. Hi, I'm Aaron from Andal. It's time for the semiconductor microprocess boundary to shift from 3 nanometers to 2 nanometers. Of course, as I always say, 3 nanometers, 2 nanometers and 5 nanometers don't refer to the transistor's length. They refer to the distance between transistors, TSMC, Intel and Samsung, has been miniaturized to this extent. I said it's symbolic to fit more into the same space. In that sense, you can see that the shape of this transistor has changed significantly. Up to 5 nanometers we used FinFET structures, now it's gate all around. I look forward to all three using it. However, the structure of gate all around is not identical across the three major companies. There's a small difference. Let's start with transistor basics. There are benefits and drawbacks, and the structures themselves vary, resulting in distinct characteristics and processes. Finally, the 2 nanometer era, the era where gate all around is applied in earnest. Which technologies are key? What equipment is needed? Are there many small and medium semiconductor firms? Let's take a moment to consider that. First, before we know GAA structure, looking back at how it was, in the early days, until we reached around the 20 nanometer mark, we utilized what is referred to as the planar structure. What is the plane? Can you see this section here? Depending on the amount of voltage that is applied to the gate, the resulting current will be determined. This transistor is digitized to act like a switch, showing 0 or 1. In the past, it was gradually reduced. As I reduced it, the flow of electricity was not as smooth as expected. This led to the development of the FinFET concept. Notice this protruding section that resembles a fin? So this is where the current can flow when flat. This is the extent of this dimension. This concept allows current to flow in 3D on three sides. From this point on, we have discussed the width of a microprocess. We've discussed 45 nanometer and 32 nanometer. The cell shape is now three-dimensional. This design allows more current to flow. The size of the cell itself was not linked. We can't specify 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers or 3 nanometers by the line width, but we can assert that it achieves a density on par with 7 nanometers. So when I mention 3 nanometers from TSMC, Intel or Samsung, it's not the same as standard DDR4 and DDR5 memory. It's simply a designation. In fact, how much power it will have, how much shrinkage, density and performance it will have are all different. At that moment I thought I couldn't do it, which led to the creation of this peculiar structure you see right next to it. Previously it was a 3D structure, but now we've moved to 4D. The structure that allows the current to flow more efficiently is the gate all around. The idea behind this blue gate all around is referred to as gate all around because it completely encircles the channel. Different companies use various names for this technology. For instance, Intel refers to it as ribbon fed. TSMC employs a nanosheet design. Samsung calls it MBCFET. Each one is slightly different. Anyway, considering this dark blue section, the current FinTech structure has three sides like Korea. If it surrounds, it can envelop all four sides much like an island. Think of it as a tunnel over the channel. Then you can control the current flow more precisely. It maximizes contact for better current control. It can create a uniform and strong electric field throughout the channel. Even if there are slight changes or modifications to the size of the gate, it's called electrical conductivity. You can adjust it precisely, so you can use that. In other words, the current feedback structure is inadequate for consistent control. It was too hard. With this kind of current flow, this fluidity, control becomes difficult. Nevertheless, TSMC zeroed in on this to refine our 3 nanometer capabilities. Samsung may have introduced GAA structure earlier. Now let's delve into how Foundry 34, TSMC, Samsung and Intel are approaching the implementation of this GAA structure. Upon closer inspection, this structure is identified as a multi-bridge channel FET, which is commonly abbreviated as MBCFET, which is different from Samsung's FinFET. MBC means multi-bridge channel. Why multi-bridge? It has several legs. I incorporated a channel with three sides into the FinFET design. I'll place this in the center. I'll wrap it around, and I'm going to wrap it around. But there are many cases like this. A thin nano sheet is often used. You can think of it as a nano level sheet layer that is stacked and forms a bridge. Think of it as a thin sheet. The current will spread widely around this area. It can be controlled more precisely than it shows on the screen. If this happens, we can see this cross section by placing just three nano sheets. Do you notice how large the surrounding area is, even with just three of them? The advantage of nano sheets is that with a few, you get a lot of width. It can drive more current. So ultimately, this allows for a higher current density in the same footprint. Another benefit is design flexibility. You can form a rectangular shape like this. Or do we use only three of these? No, we'll use just two. We'll use two to make a cheaper process node. That's how it works. Or you can narrow the width of the nano sheet. Building a structure like this offers scalability. But it also has drawbacks. It doesn't seem easy to manufacture. This transistor is incredibly small. You must create this structure within a realm of mere tens of nanometers. 
I'm making a video on step 8. It involves photoresist application and reselling water-soluble products. It's going to be very complicated to build a nanosheet layer by layer. To achieve such precision, you need equipment that can match that level of accuracy. It's hard to make because you have to cut it several times. It may take a long time to get to Jeju Island and the process may take longer, even if you cut steps. It might be challenging, leading to higher costs. Furthermore, there are multiple layers involved. Imagine I completed it, that's the end of it. But you can make billions of these cells each time. They fill a single house. If there is a difference in water quality, it becomes challenging to manage the demand. To ensure uniform quality, it should be knife sharp. But if you make it, it can be bumpy and stick out. Making these is very tough. It's a nanosheet structure with pros and cons. So in the case of Samsung, reports say the company is trying again at 2 nanometers despite few customers. So in the FinFET structure, the MBC FET can rise like this. You can envision it as an MBC FET that essentially takes on a configuration similar to that of a nanosheet type structure. MBC FET is a multi-bridge channel. Actually, the overall form and structure are nearly identical. The brand name was Ribbon FET. They aimed for early this year, but the 2 nanometer attempt failed. Right now, my focus is on 1.8 nanometers. Regardless, I intend to layer this ribbon-shaped channel in several tiers. The principle of using a nano-shaped ribbon remains the same. However, it is akin to the nano-sheet structure. But the thickness of the channel is greater than the nano-sheet structure used by Samsung. It's slightly thicker. That's why it's a ribbon. It's paper thin. It's not sturdy. It's like a ribbon. Honestly, it doesn't look like a ribbon. Think of it as a thick pork cutlet. Here, you have the ability to adjust the transistor's height, incorporate multiple ribbons, or alter the ribbon width to gain similar advantages as the nano-sheet. Especially beside the nano-sheet. It looks a bit bulky. The benefit of this bulkiness is that it helps prevent current leakage, so it's likely to be preferred by mobile chips, even in data centers. Nevertheless, I am quite worried about the energy usage, which is why this design is crucial. There are elements I am eager about and elements I am anticipating. It's easier to make it a bit bulkier than to make it thin. It will become wider. The ribbon's width is narrow, so the current might be limited. In terms of performance, you can think of it as a possibility that the gain range might be slightly less than that of a pin pad. The last major foundry player is TSMC. TSMC uses classic nanosheet transistors, beyond the pin pad. In fact, if you look at what TSMC announced in April this year, we used more than a pen. To boost pen pad demand and performance, we merged our expertise and found many technologies. I've made several videos before. It looks like they ensured that expertise was transferred to gate all around. TSMC does not make sudden changes. It's a top-notch company. Sudden factory changes may require altering many facilities. TSMC makes products for many companies. Big risks aren't wise. So basically it's like Samsung's MBC FET. Think of it as a shallow structure. If you look, in front of you is a nano ribbon pad. It appears that both structures are being parallelized to find a more suitable solution. First, the structure needs to be thicker. To lengthen it, to count them, to use the transistors, and so on. It seems to be optimizing this by adjusting the shape. So depending on how you present it, some of them are mobile, for instance, being used in the iPhone. Some parts can go into NVIDIA's AI GPU. Others can be used in Broadcom's XPU. In the end, if the change is too drastic, demand might drop compared to pin pad. You can use compatible process equipment with the pin pad. It's not all revealed yet. It appears that TSMC's expertise will be directly applied, forming a structure that connects in the form of a ribbon or a sheet. However, nano sheets and nano ribbons aren't separate. It involves optimizing factors and finding the right solution. We'll see TSMC's structure and size in 2025. What are the limitations of gate all-around technology? First, it's too complex to make. Here, you see a structure with just one fin on a pin pad. I wrote down each step. Look, I made it sharp. Next, I added the oxide layer on top, carefully removed it, and then precisely positioned the gate back on top. This part of the gate was dark blue before. Next, I will cut this part of the gate. So, it's structured in a three-sided manner, forming a complete structure. It's tricky with a pin. Now try 3D. Yet, with the gate all-around technology, the gate now wraps around the middle. The red section of the gate needs to completely surround it. To encapsulate it, you need to create a central layer from the start, and you must pattern it so that only this segment is exposed. Just so you know, there are nano ribbons, nano sheets, and nano wires. First, I'll form the structure into the desired shape, then I'll encase it with the gate, and finally, I'll cut it out once more. The challenge is to boost demand while ensuring each of the billions of transistors is perfectly shaped. Next, to form the GAA structure. We call this etching. Be precise with cleaning, deposition, and adhesion tools. As you can now see, the substances differ. The colors indicate different substances. Each material has its own range. Some handle up to 300 degrees, others more. Some materials fail at certain temperatures. They need to be prepared early. Everything is set in order. When it comes to the temperature, pressure, 
The chemical concentration is very fine-grained, resulting in high optimization. The thickness of the wire will determine how well it is crafted. Thus, while a pin pad protrudes outward, the gate all-around structure completely surrounds it. Optimizing this needs a lot of experience. Surrounding structures move more freely. It's not easy to do all at once. So the era of FinFET is nearing its end as it transitions from 20 nanometers down to almost 3 nanometers. 2 nanometers and 1.8 nanometers will switch to gate all around. For TSMC, the media reported that the initial fare rate was approximately 60%. Seeing 60% as meaningful without discussing the duration felt odd. Anyway, we need to work more with companies in visual equipment and chemicals. In reality, it's hard to tell it is made in a factory. In the Bronze Age, they found bronze. In the Iron Age, they found iron and made fire. These discoveries happened by chance, leading to the creation of an alloy. It is like this. This is actually similar. Each has its own characteristics. But overall, the data on refining the optimal shape. The situation remains uncertain as they haven't produced a significant number of chips or wafers yet, leaving us without comprehensive outcome data. In a similar fashion to TSMC, you can maximize the connection from one pin pad to another. Conversely, Samsung appears to have proactively developed this structure early on, aiming to seize a chance for a strategic shift. Anyway, even if wafer prices rise, semiconductor tech cannot stop. If it's a GAA structure, the wafer price will be very high. The reason is the increase in process steps. Making such a complex structure requires several steps. As a result, the monthly wafer output might see a decline. From that perspective, I believe the prices of these IT devices will gradually increase. It might burden the design company. Currently, TSMC is performing exceptionally well, so they believe it's justified. So I hope that other foundry companies will also remain competitive and perform well. This has been Aaron from Andal Engineering.